Hello designers and welcome to a 3D Studio Max tutorial with me your host Tim Evans. Today we're going to be taking a look at some V-Ray water. So if we jump right in, as you can see here we've got a nice blue ocean uh, with some sand below, um, some a green grass bank and some rocks scattered around. Today in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at how to get this reflectivity of the water and a realistic look as you can see. So if we jump right in, first I'll show you the scene that we're using today. Uh, we have a simple plane for our water and this makes it incredibly quick to render as it calculates all of the ripples and everything through a displace map. And then below this we have our terrain which you can create your own. We will go over this a bit later, but that's just a very simple terrain. And it also has the rocks scattered around, which we will cover in another tutorial. To set up this scene, uh, you will see we've got a simple V-Ray Sun, which you can find by just going through to your Create the Light, uh, select V-Ray and V-Ray Sun. You just drag this in, and use the default settings. And we also have a camera. If I zoom out, set up, looking directly at our model. And this again, you can just click on the cameras, select V-Ray and V-Ray Physical Cam. You then click that where you want and drag it out. So if we jump back into that, what we're going to be looking at today is the water. So let's bring up our material tab and we're going to create one from scratch. So if your material editor looks slightly different to this one, uh, you may be in the slate material editor. If it looks something like, more like this, uh, then you're going to click up modes and come back to the compact material editor. And this brings this window up here. So providing that you are in V-Ray, so render setup, uh, common, scroll down to the bottom, assign renderer and make sure you have select V-Ray advanced uh, which mine does not show as it is already selected. Uh, you could use any version of V-Ray for this. Uh, 2.4 onwards should work all fine. With this demonstration of mine I'm using the version 3. So now once we've got that selected we're just going to leave everything as default. We're going to close that. We're going to come over to our material editor, select on a blank material, and where it says Arc Design or Standard, yours may say, I'm going to open that up and select a new V-Ray material. And for this, we are then going to click on the Diffuse to give this a color. And if I look at my cheat sheet, I have the best color that I find for this nice blue is 64195 and 228 and it gives us a nice blue. Uh, then we're going to come down to refraction and for this we're going to set it to a very white um, because of the scale of model I'm using. We're going to push the subdivisions up to 20, the IOR to 1.333 and the fog color we're going to select to 156 um, 224 and 241 and this gives us quite a dark or light blue should I say. Uh, the fog multiplier will be 0 0.01 and we're going to click the affect shadows. Uh, if we jump back up to the reflect we're going to click the little square next to the colour and we're going to add a fall off map. Uh, from this we're going to select the black and set this to I believe 47 so still quite a dark 49 that will do and the white we will change to 144 okay we're going to select the fall off type as a Fresnel uh, leave the fall off direction as viewing direction and change the material IRR to the same as before, so one, 
three, three, three. We're going to then scroll down. We're going to right click. Once we've got our mix curve open, we're going to right click and say base at corner and drag that out to make a nice curve and do the same for this top one so we get a good curve and then we're going to come back up to our default and we're going to scroll down to our maps open this up we're going to select the reflect to 50 and our displace we're going to click on none and add a mix in here we are first going to add color one and we are going to add a noise in here we will select explicit map channel select turbulence have a height of 0.6 a level 3 the size will be 0.5 uh, no the size will be 0.25 when the low and phase at zero we then set the colors to 195 normal no and to black and we will change the name to small waves we will then come back up a level to color 2 select that add a noise do the same as before explicit map channel turbulence the high will be 0.6 again with a three of levels the size will be 0.5 the low will be zero and the phase will be 0.5 and the colors for this one we're just going to click swap so we have color one as white and color two as black and change the name to large waves just to make it easier if we come back to edit it later so from here you're going to leave everything else the same we're just going to copy large waves onto none and leave that as instance so with that done we're going to come back to a default and just scroll down make sure all of that is okay our displace uh, we're going to change the level of this to one um, and if you find that your waves are too large or too small um, to make them smaller obviously make the number smaller and to make them larger make the number larger so if we just push this back up and everything else can be left as the same and what we're going to do is just double click on this so we can see a larger view and this is the sort of color and click on background just so that we can make sure it is fully reflective and you can see through with the refraction as well so let's just close that uh, come back into our render setup and let's just have a look at the settings I have already put in uh, everything can be left um, as default uh, there's no real need to change that um, unless you are slightly more advanced and looking to get a slightly better result out of it um, for our GI you want to click enable GI and we're just going to leave it as the default which is a radiance map and light cache and with that selected we're going to click on the radiance map and make sure this is set to low and we're going to click on light cache and mine is a bit funny so I'm just going to set that to 1000 and all the rest can stay the same uh, if we come into our settings then uh, this doesn't really matter we can just leave this on basic and you can play around with these later um, depending if your scene is struggling to render because of memory or so on but we will take a look at that at another time so we're just going to close that and make sure that we have applied our material onto our plane and if we have a look at our plane we have a single plane but then we have a UVW map on top um, so for this I have set it to a box and f for this example I'm using 10,000 10,000 and 10,000 and all the rest can stay the same uh, you may find if your waves are too big or too small if you can play around with these figures to change it easily 
So with all that in mind, let's just click our render and see what this brings us. So as you can see, we've got a very dark blue ocean, which is good for a very deep area. Again, you might find that yours is either very light or even darker according to the model you're using this on. So what we're going to do, if we just stop that there, because I want to make it much shallower, uh, we just drag that to the side for now, come back to our material editor, and what we're going to do is lower our fog color. Now this is one way to do it. We just drag this down to a lot lower and just to hit a render again. And while this calculates, you can see it's already a lot lighter with about light bouncing through much clearer. And we have a good scale on the waves. So there you have it. Now that that is finished, uh, the only other things you may wish to play with is you can obviously change the main color by changing either the diffuse or the fog color. Or if you scroll all the way down and come back to our displays, if we set this up to, let's go a bit extreme and it's in this case say 10, click render again. And as you can see our water gets a lot rougher. So this is going to take a little bit longer to calculate. But there you have it, our waves are much rougher than before. And now the difference between using this displace or as a bump, as you can see at the edge, we have quite a change in the level. If we were to use this as a bump or not at all, you would not see any change in that line. Now the advantage of doing it this way, if we zoom in, to our ocean and you can see although it's not that clear that you do get the waves as they are on the beach it's not a flat line which can make it a lot more convincing so there we have it our first tutorial with the V-Ray water uh, next time we're going to be doing a look at how to create this terrain and mapping the texture and we will also be looking at the rocks that we have dotted around so if you've joined it enjoyed it uh, please like the video if you've disliked it leave a dislike or a comment and we will see you next time thank you